Dom Bevin is joining us, uh, Robin Byron, and Boyd Matheson. Uh, Boyd, listening to Marco Rubio and the way he is setting up, and apparently we're told working very closely with the administration and how they approach this. Uh, this was something that, that I know uh, your old boss, Senator Mike Lee, had wanted to do, but in stages. So w what will the differentiation be here? We don't go back to what we had, but what do we do here? So I, I think what I think what Marco Rubio is is really teeing up is this forward movement and this connection to the people of Cuba. Uh, I think that's the whole key that we can't go to the the regime component to this. Uh, obviously, we're not going all the way back, but I think it's significant uh, in terms of how far back it seems to be ratcheting what the Obama administration did. And as you rightly pointed out before, Neil, uh, the real key to this is for the president not just to do this by another order that might be swept away by somebody else in a few years. He needs to go to Congress, and I think that's one of of the markers that Senator Rubio is laying down is we can start with this declaration today, but this needs to go back to Congress if we're going to really get this right and get on a path that really, really will lead to more liberty for the people of Cuba. Uh, Robert, a former Obama campaign regional field director and the vice president is going to speak very soon, but I did want to squeeze you in, Robin, this thought that the president might have regretted then, this one right now, if it doesn't get congressional approval. Uh, you know, you're exactly right. I'm actually really encouraged by everything that I just heard Marco Rubio say. Uh, President Obama started this process right before he left office, and I'm really glad to, this is somewhere we can work bipartisanly uh, through Congress. This is, I think, a victory for all of us, and we it's need to work together. For your this old is, the boss, American right? people it's want It's not this. a victory for your old boss, right? I mean, um, it's, by the way, Florida Governor uh, Rick Scott there. I misidentified him. Uh, but but uh, this administration is trying to undo much of what President Obama did, not entirely to your point, but does that worry you, that part? Well, any, uh, obviously, if they're trying to roll back some of, some of what Obama set in place, but Obama, right before he left office, started opening back up to trade and travel uh, uh, to Cuba. So any, anywhere we can work together to try and to, to, pro, uh, move right. progress with Cuba, I'm, I'm all for. Um, you know, it, we're going to be caught in the weeds a little bit. There's a lot more to investigate, but I think the Democrats need to pay careful attention and find where, ways where we can work together uh, regarding this issue, Neil. Tom Bevan, a real clear politics. One of the things you always search for in a deal is how much you're getting out of it. And then, of course, Donald Trump is famous for saying almost all the deals that this country gets involved in, uh, we get the shorter end of the stick on this one. He wants to make sure that we get. Uh, fair treatment that our businesses do and what have you, but can pulling out now, or at least business interests pulling out now, leave foreign competitors at an advantage here? Uh, perhaps, you know, but this was one of Donald Trump's campaign promises indeed, that he indeed. was going to deliver on. He thought this was a bad deal and he was going to renegotiate it. And one of the major complaints from Marco Rubio and others was that this gave away too much to the regime. They didn't have to do anything in response. They gave, the, the Cuban regime gave nothing uh, in, in exchange for getting all of these uh, benefits and so Trump is is now ratcheting that back and and we'll see how it goes from here. But I agree with you. It's a, it's a it should be a congressional thing um, moving forward. And if he can get bipartisanship and get it through Congress, um, then it, he'll be able to put that down as as one of the you know another campaign promise filled. You know, uh, Boyd Matheson, much has been made of the fact that uh, and it was the argument for Barack Obama normalizing or at least semi-normalizing relations with the Cubans is that. For 50 or 60 years of a, a cold of war between our two countries and everything else, that nothing came of it. Uh, nothing for them, nothing for us, at least now. Americans are going to travel there. They get something out of it. Uh, but beyond that, U.S. business interests and hotels that could expand there, they're getting something out of it. So their argument had always been, well, there is a gain for American interests. Uh, how is that, obviously, something the president disagrees with, how is that going down? There's a difference between having a seat at the table and giving away the table altogether. Uh, and so I think that while you could say, well, nothing really moved over that 60-year period, you, you can't just suddenly normalize everything and expect that to be a good deal for America and for the American people and for American business. And so I do think it's going to be an incremental thing. Uh, this is certainly not the end today. It's really just the end of the beginning. And like I said before, the, the hard work and heavy lifting is going to have to be done by Congress step by step, proving it out, making sure the regime responds accordingly, and that the Cuban people are empowered to really move it all forward. Robin, uh, do you know when this was crafted in the Obama administration, and maybe you were there for all the details of that, was there a sense of how Americans would be treated if they traveled alone to Cuba? I know if you're part of a cruise line or whatever, that's different, I guess, you're in large groups, so it's not 
something that's so aggressively policed. But technically, I was told that even loan travel would have been frowned upon. I don't know if it would have been illegal. But um, yes, it, now in this case, it will be deemed illegal. But uh, maybe bring it up to date. What was the thinking then? Protection of Americans is our first and foremost interest. So yes, loan travel was there was there was a lot of concern about that. Uh, obviously, we started with uh, cruise lines, like you said, Neil, going back to Cuba, uh, and and this is incremental. But like I said, we we have a, a wonderful opportunity here to have bipartisan support, work together. Americans are very tired of the partisan politics, and this is somewhere we can work together. And and it started under President Obama. Yes, Donald Trump is is countering some of what was done. But we can still work with what we're given, Neil. All right, Tom, real quickly on this and what happens from here. Uh, the president is going to stick to a promise he said he would deliver on, and he's delivering on it today. But uh, for Americans who look at, all right, uh, this is a place that we want to go, we want to travel to, we want to see. Um, how big a deal will that be for folks? Or is that such a relatively small audience? There are plenty of other options in that neck of the woods. Is it just a moot point? Yeah, look, I don't think that in the grand scheme of things, um, you know, this is not going to affect many Americans. They're not going to have uh, a real opinion about it one way or the other. I mean, again, a lot of this stuff, Neil, comes, comes down to uh, is all background noise to the economy. Can he get the economy moving? Are the policies that he's putting in place helping fuel the economy? And, and, and that's really where, you know, his, his presidency is going to be decided, I think, uh, by most Americans in the end. All right.